and thank you for having me. Um, at my last place, they told me not to be nervous, just pretend we're all naked, so um, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, there is, I know there's a lot of people here, there's a clear shoebox. My lovely assistant will show you that. I wanted to start out with that first. Um, all the teachers, all the counselors, special ed aides everywhere um, in our district, and they're doing this in other districts as well. I know Huron Valley had also started this, uh, Heartland Schools. It's called the Comfort Caddy. Comfort Caddy will give it to all the schools, and if you look, just hold up a couple of things. We have little toys, little stuffed animals. Um, we have coloring books and pencils. We have Play-Doh. Does anybody want to guess what age group this Comfort Caddy is for? What do you think? Kindergarten. Fourth grade. Oh, cool. uh, this is actually middle school. Uh, they do this K through 12, and if any of the students get stressed in the classroom, what they're doing is you give them the comfort caddy, they can go into the project room or in the corner with their comfort caddy and play or color or with their toys. So that's what a comfort caddy is. <laughs> um, all right, before I begin, I'll, I'll read a little bio about myself. Uh, my name is Ilona Rugg. I am from a German-Polish background. While living in Germany for three years, I attended school in Berlin until my mother decided to leave her family from the socialist country she grew up in to make her new home here in the United States and became an American citizen. I am the first one in my family to go on to college while attending college, I worked as a nanny and landscaper. I graduated from Wayne State University with a master's plus 15 with a major in science, minor in art. I also have an advanced master gardener certification from Michigan State University. Um, I have worked as an educator for over 30 years in Michigan, 26 of those years in the Novi Community School District, where I retired from in 2020. Uh, while working as a public school teacher and trying to keep my conservative Christian values, I took advantage of the right to work, dropping my union. I pushed back against district and public education through newspaper articles, live radio interviews on WAM Radio out of Ann Arbor, and provided information for an investigative report published by the Thomas More Law Center that went viral all over the world. I currently um, work for WCHY Radio in Sheboygan in advertising sales. Um, I'm also working at a florist. It smells good in there. I have volunteered for numerous conservative events in Michigan, attended workshops in Washington, D.C. through Freedom Works for election integrity, and was a poll challenger, and helped campaign for several individuals running for office, all while still teaching in public school. I have made an ongoing effort to inform parents and the public that public schools are using our children to indoctrinate them. Children are not being taught moral values about their God-given rights or about our American culture. Children are being taught what to think, not how to think. The public needs to know this and how their tax dollars are being spent. We all, oh, by the way, uh, Epic Times is here and they would like to interview a few of you um, if you're willing to stay behind a little bit. Uh, if you raise your hand, wherever you are, uh, they would like to interview some people afterwards. We all trust that our children will learn math, history, proper grammar, spelling, cursive, how to become a responsible, respective, productive individual and pass good morals they learn on to others. Oh, I almost forgot. Most public schools no longer teach grammar and spelling. That is optional and should no longer affect a student's grade. Cursive? Who needs it? 
Science and math, that is now replaced with common core and the mention of God is a no-no. Social studies is the new history where students are indoctrinated with socialistic ideology such as everyone is a victim, the haves and haves not, spread the wealth, and people are bad and destroying the planet. School rules only look good on paper but are never enforced with fear of hurting someone's feelings. In addition, it is widely accepted for a seven-year-old in public school to be dissatisfied how God made them and decide for themselves to change their gender at will. While the teachers better accommodate these children or else. Biblical morality is replaced with self-gratification and attention-seeking behavior. Faith, family, and liberty are replaced with a values-free education, sexual ethics, students unable to reason for themselves, and not knowing the difference between right and wrong. All of this is the interweaving of what is critical race theory, another name for Marxism. Let me inform you first about Michigan's new social studies standards. These words were taken directly from the social studies standards the Michigan Board of Education passed, despite pushback from the public uh, and the community members. I had um, the privilege to be asked by Patrick Kolbeck to speak in front of the school board, the Michigan State School Board, um, as the school board was going around Michigan asking the community what they thought of the new standards. So I showed up at one of them at the Oakland schools, um, and this is what I said. And these words were taken exactly from the new social studies standards that are now implemented in the public school system. The social studies curriculum is teaching what we uh, that we are a democracy, which we are not. A democracy is like two wolves and a lamb deciding what's for dinner. We are a constitutional republic, which is also referred in our Pledge of Allegiance. The social studies standards also mentions gay rights under civil rights. Our declaration clearly states that we all are created equal. We all have equal value in the eyes of our creator. Our laws give us all equal protection, yet for some reason the standards have made an effort to take that part out. It also mentions that we are global citizens. I don't know about you, but I am a United States citizen and no one can change that. Studies curriculum is teaching students to be activists. There are words like persuasive communication, act constructively to further the public good, develop and implement an action plan, persuasive essays to justify a position, public discourse, public participation, persuasive communication about global issues, Conduct activities intended to advance views in matter of public policy. Report, evaluate, and engage in national or global issues. The social studies curriculum insinuates how irresponsible America is when in fact America has among the cleanest environments and highest living standards anywhere. In these social studies standards, it gives an unfair balance to other religions. These standards have words like the significance of increasing trade between Islam and Christianity, the influence of Islam on Christianity and Hinduism, tension between Christianity and Orthodox Christianity, growth of Islam, Dharalism, where Muslim sovereignty prevails, the significance of Islam, the extent of Muslim empires, society, religious traditions of Islam, culture, political and economic influence, the caliphate as a religious and political institute. So our Christian views are mentioned very little in the social study standards. 
By the way, they no longer call Christmas break or Easter break Christmas or Easter anymore. It's all winter break, spring break, mid midterm break. The social studies curriculum is pushing the study of socialism and a progressive indoctrination, not education. I came from a socialist country and I came here because of your constitutional republic. Why would you even entertain anything else in this great country? Why would you, um, why are they having their minds shaped by those who oppose God, individual freedom, and self-government. They are indoctrinated on everything from gender, sustainable lifestyles, global citizenship, and diversity. These standards have words like promoting the common good, providing economic security, molding the character of citizens, promoting a particular religion, keeping an ethnic group party in power, the role of the government as a provider of goods and services, hmm. the haves and have-nots, expressing identity, cultural diffusion, distribution of wealth, narrow the inequitable distribution of resources. This is all in our social studies standards. I had parents in tears when they were talking in front of the board. It was nothing more than a dog and pony show because they just went ahead and, and um, started the new social studies standards whether we liked them or not. So this is what's going on. They don't care. Um, one of my students who was visibly distraught was terrorized by a current narrative about global warming. This was one of my students in middle school. Uh, we were looking outside the window and I, I was explaining to her, oh, it looks so beautiful outside. It was snowing, everything was snow covered. She said to me, oh, but I don't think I'll be around to uh, see many of those in the future. And I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, because of the global warming thing. And I said, no, I had to reassure her. No, you're going to be here for a long time. You're going to be old and gray, and you're going to live to see hundreds and thousands more days like this. Not to worry. Um, so I had to counsel her and how the earth goes through cyclical fluctuations. The world is not going to end, and you will still be here to witness another beautiful day. This is another example of what is being pushed in social studies. Words like power, high power, uh, high, ha, ha, bleh. <laughs> how higher standards of living increase pollution, how plastics in the U.S. can impact water resources, and all of you who drink from plastic straws, yeah. shame on you. <laughs> the use of fossil fuels leading to climate change, global issues, climate change, population growth, resource growth and depletion, meeting the needs of refugees, poverty, terrorism. No wonder so many students suffer from depression. Uh, I had a student, uh, let's see if this is, I had a student um, there was one in second grade who did not know whether they were a girl or a boy yet. Um, and the, there was also fifth grade girls who were making out in the parking lot. I had a fifth grader that was going to go into my sixth grade who also could not tell whether they were a boy or a girl. My principal told me about this and I told him do not put them in my classroom. I will not uh, play that game with he, she, they, or them. And he said, well, we're public school. We have to uh, take everybody in school. I said, that's, that's correct. But I will call them by their God-given name and whatever gender they were born into. So don't put them in my classroom and expect me to entertain this. Because if the parents are going along with this and pushing this uh, gender identity problem, then their kids should be taken away for child abuse. Yeah. Yeah. 
And the girls that were making out in the parking lot, they did nothing. They don't even bother to entertain it. They don't inform them about what's right or wrong. Um, we also have, a lot of the schools have a GSA group. You know how schools have um, uh, like after school programs? We have the Gay Straight Alliance. A lot of the schools have that, but they don't, when I ask, they don't have a Christian group. The teachers go around with the Gay Straight Alliance t-shirt advertising it, and those teachers are trained um, to have gay and straight, but only straight if you agree with their agenda. So Christianity is completely um, a word of the past. They don't even have those groups in the schools, those clubs. Uh, a lot of the schools uh, are passing out contraceptives or allowing children to change clothing to cross-dress without parents knowing about it. And we don't have to tell you. I don't, I'm not sure if you uh, knew this, ladies and gentlemen, but social studies in my district, they are doing this in other districts as well. Um, social studies is about 50 minutes long. 25 minutes of social studies is dedicated to showing CNN to the kids every day. That's part of the curriculum. When I asked the social studies teacher why they're doing this, they said it's a good in, uh, source of information in current events. So CNN is seen every single day in our district and a lot of other districts as well. So that is 25 minutes every day in a 55 minute um, class. Our social studies uh, curriculum should be politically neutral and unbiased and accurate. It should be a balanced view of history and civics. It should demonstrate a love of our country and how we've evolved to a great free self-governing country we are today. It should not teach children what to think but how to think. It should not lose sight of our great nation and all the things we should stand for and be grateful for. It should give equal value to Christianity and our Christian values. It is what our country was based on, was it not? Why, ladies and gentlemen, do other countries get to have a balanced view of history and civics in their own sovereign nation? If those other countries do, why is Michigan and the United States not allowed to? Even after objections from parents and some in tears, these social studies standards still were passed and are being implemented by the State Board of Education. Let me give you some examples of how teachers are also being indoctrinated. Every year teachers have what's called a PSD day, a professional staff development. We are required to take a certain amount and that goes towards our college credits for renewing our teaching certificate. We had one workshop run by high school students on how, now, now mind you, these are high school students that were running the workshop for us, the adults. There were no adults in the room. The <coughs> high school students were addressing us um, they, how they wanted to be addressed by he, she, they, or them. And if the teacher does not make the student feel, un, uh, if they make them feel uncomfortable, the student can walk out of my classroom and go into another teacher's classroom that had a um, little triangle that said safe zone on it. Those teachers are trained in the LGBTQ plus one, X, Y, Z, I don't know. Um, they were trained in that. So they walk out of my room, go to their safe space teacher's classroom. It's a little triangle with a rainbow on it and it says safe zone. They go there, tell on me, and then that teacher goes to administration and it's a vicious circle. So I'm in trouble for not addressing them by the way the children want to be addressed. 
That's what it looks like on the teacher's classroom door. Another example is we had also a two-day workshop given to teachers by someone named Huda Esse. She was a Muslim from Dearborn that gives lectures throughout the country to schools, universities, and businesses. And we found out that it wasn't just in our school, it was several other schools in Michigan. She goes around the country. This is not just in Novi. During this two-day event, she instilled that the majority of terror attacks since 9-11 have been carried out by white supremacists doing it in the name of their Christian religion, not Islamic-linked terrorists. So I ask you, what does this have to do with my teaching and becoming a better teacher? I had to listen to this for two days, and it was mandatory. And I got credit for it, and you paid for it. Uh, Huda was never vetted prior to the hiring, nor were parents informed that their children would be given several surveys in school for Huda. Uh, we were never, uh, uh, they never told us why I was getting all these surveys. Teachers had surveys, the kids had surveys, but they never told us what they wanted it for. There were 115 questions Everything from who do you walk to school with? How many people in your family? What is your background? Show us on the map where your family roots come from. Um, do, you take, do you take a walking path? Do you ride a bike? What is your address? All of this, 115 questions. And you can imagine how long it took my students to do 115 questions. I had the same survey uh, with some different questions, but 115. And then after she came into the workshop, because she gave the workshop to parents and to students, they did the whole survey again to see if they changed any answers. The survey, besides uh, Huda not being vetted, they never asked the parents for permission to give the survey. And all that information went straight to her. And we don't have to tell you. And it's the same thing with the curriculum. The curriculum might be online, but it's not the entire curriculum. Because we were told, just give the parents a little bit of information. You don't have to give them it all, because it'll just, they'll ask too many questions, and they don't understand. These surveys that were also given to all teachers contained 115 questions. Um, they wanted to know who they live with, where they live, number of family members, how they get to school, the route, and who they walk with, etc. This is an example of how people are vacuuming up huge amounts of our children's private information. I'm going to show you some pictures. I, I couldn't get them all because she took a lot of them. Huda Essay took a lot off of her website. But these are some of the things that she showed us. And the funny thing is, she would show us, but she wouldn't say a word in case people recorded it. Uh, so she just showed us a bunch of these and went through them like crazy in two days. There must have been over 50 of these that she showed us. So these are just a few of the ones that I captured. I'm wondering, why would she show us all this? This has nothing to do with becoming a better teacher. All this indoctrination that she did for so many hours. workshop um, on day two I knew something was going on so on the second day of this workshop um, I couldn't keep quiet in my seat any longer so I recorded it 
<laughs> and I informed the Thomas More Law Center. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Thomas More Law Center. They're a nonprofit Christian law firm that works on donations, and they uh, they're a constitutional lawyer. The Thomas More Law Center, and that is when I, I exposed the school district. This was not only happening here in Michigan, but also at a number of schools and universities all across the country. Some things that um, you can look this up. There's a lot of disturbing information that the Thomas More Law Center found out about Huda S.A. and her program. Uh, it says that, just reading a couple of things from the um, report, the school district has presented no teacher training seminars focusing on Christianity, Judaism, or any other religion, only Islam. Essay's client list reveals she has been spreading her trash America first philosophy to colleges, universities, schools, and professional educator associations throughout Michigan, California, Georgia, Texas, Florida, and beyond. In Michigan alone, her website lists, now this was at that time, Oakland County Schools, Ann Arbor Schools, Lance Cruz Public Schools, Plymouth Canton, Roseville, Farmington, Dearborn, Birmingham, and Melvindale. Under the banner of promoting diversity, inclusion, and multicultural approach to education, Huda Essay sets about comparing Islam to Christianity, calling them mostly similar. The one big difference, she claims, is that Islam is the world's only purely monotheistic religion. The Quran is superior to the Bible. So you can look this information up online. The article is very disturbing. You should read it. Oh, and by the way, the tax dollar paid for her. So, and the parents didn't know about this. All right, another thing, teachers were also given, uh, when we had the, I call it the pandemic, and you're all sitting at home, teachers were also given a 21-day challenge. It contained videos, articles, and lectures for teachers to view and discuss afterwards about white privilege, white supremacy, and how racist we really are. Diversity, equity, inclusion, putting in our heads how much we should hate our culture and our whiteness. Here are some titles presented in this 21-day challenge. So we had 21 days. Every day there was a different lecture, a video, um, a, a reading, articles to read, all about how ashamed we should be of our white culture. We also, around the same time, we received an email from our superintendent. And in the email, let me just read a couple of lines. Uh, in the wake of the George Floyd murder, we have not been silent on this issue in our district. For many years, we have focused on social justice, examining our own implications implicit biases, reflecting on how our language shapes and influence perception and finding ways through summer programs like this and other activities to support our students in their journal. But we are far from finished. Black students are overrepresented in special education. Black students are overrepresented in discipline. Some might say we need the support, they need the support, or they need to act right. To that I say bull, oh. <laughs> that's my superintendent. Those of us who work with these students need to change. We need to change how we teach so that we can reach all of our students. We need to change how we see behaviors and support instead of punishing them. 
We need to look at how they react to situations. I am not suggesting that anything goes. I am, I am not suggest, suggesting that these students need help, that they should not receive the help, but the help they receive needs to be in our classrooms, not separate, separating them from their peers and labeling students and suspending students. I would encourage you to use your voice. You do not need my permission. And then the next day, a first grade teacher and um, the superintendent had a Black Lives Matter parade. Um, um, I can't even remember anymore. Um, Dr. Matthews, Steve Matthews. Oh, I'm in big trouble now. <laughs> um, so what they were doing is they had a Black Lives Matter parade and all the children and parents who wanted to participate with the teachers down in front of our school had a parade. But before the parade, they asked us, if you want to hold up any signs, make sure you get permission. Um, send us in an email the sign that you want to hold up and we'll get the superintendent to okay it and so but make sure you put it at the bottom of the list and highlight it so we know which ones haven't been okayed yet well Ilona likes to start trouble and she mixed them all up hers and she didn't highlight them and I put a lot of scriptures in there <laughs> um, and I put all lives matter and this was her response. I notice you have made several additions to the approved signed statement document. Please remember that we are representing our schools, so we need to be very careful with our words. I wanted to let you know that I removed any statements that were religious in nature, as we represent a public institution. I do not think this is the right event for those statements. Sorry, I almost forgot to mention that All Lives Matter was also removed. I had removed it once before and it appeared again. Um, the superintendent reached out to me and specifically requested that it be removed. That statement is viewed as an anti-Black Lives Matter phrase. It goes against the whole mission of this demonstration. Our goal is to show the public that we love and support the black and capital letters, community in their time of need. So I wasn't planning on attending, but um, I just wanted to make trouble, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to show you that one yet. That's, that's a good one. Okay, so we'll go. Uh, in my classroom, I had a very patriotic looking classroom. Um, I had a, pr a picture of the president, the bald eagle, a big poster of In God We Trust. I had some scriptures on the wall. I had this displayed for years. Um, this is what it looked like. I had one, this is just one of the walls. Um, I had a lot of different armies, Navy, military um, things in the room. Uh, I also, besides Trump, I had a poster of all the presidents, but this was our president for the time. And mind you, we always had a picture of the president and vice president in our library until Trump was elected. And they took it down. When I asked them about it, they said, oh no, we don't do that. We don't put those up. So I put it up in my classroom. And for almost four years, it was up there. Superintendents came through, uh, principals, teachers, uh, they never said anything. No one ever complained until uh, that last year, 2019, I had a parent complain. And the parent um, had stated, um, one parent, um, she said, hello, Mrs. Rob, at the curriculum night, I noticed that your science classroom features a wall display of posters unrelated to science including a poster of President Trump. While I would find this entirely appropriate in social studies, I'm concerned that this is disruptive to the learning environment in your room. Please let me know if you would consider replacing 
this display with posters related to your curriculum or the district goals. I look forward to your reply. So she sent that in the email and I didn't answer it right away because I'm thinking, what do I say? So about five days went by and my principal and HR wanted to meet with me. Oh, you don't want to stir trouble up again. Um, and I knew what it was about. So they met with me and they said that um, she complained that it was uh, just making her son feel uncomfortable. I said, well, that's news. He never mentioned that to me and neither did she in the email. Well, it does. I said, okay. And, well, would you consider taking it down? I said, first of all, in God we trust is on all of our money. If she's not happy with that, she can give me all of our money. <laughs> um, president Trump, whether she likes him or not, is our president. And we always had that displayed in our library in the past. Oh. And by the way, she did complain about the bald eagle, so she has something against baldness, I guess. I don't know. But she didn't like the bald eagle either. Oh! <laughs> um, so she, so what I did, she said, so um, the HR and the principal were there, and they said, well, would you consider taking it down? And I said, no, I'm not taking it down. And they said, well, okay, that's your freedom of speech, but could you at least respond to her email? I said, okay. Um, so I thought a few days and I worked with Mr. Thompson at the Thomas More Law Center before, so him and I came up with this great email. So that was her letter. And my response, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but let me read part of it. That's we came up with, it was beautiful. So I said, on Thursday, September 19, 2019, I received your September 18th email. I was in the process of responding, but you had already sent your email to the principal, and later that evening on September 19th, you also appeared, she went to the Board of Education, the superintendent, my principal, HR, and she also brought in the ACLU in her comments. Um, and publicly made a complaint against me and asked the board uh, to cause the removal of the following posters in my classroom. In God we trust, our nation's motto. The bald eagle, our nation's symbol. And the portrait of President Donald Trump. At that point, since you seemed intent on igniting a controversy, I thus saw no need to respond. So I, I'll skip over and go towards the end. The purpose of displaying the president's photo is to show respect not only because he is the highest elected official in our land, but also because he is the commander and chief in charge with the awesome responsibility to defend our nation and our constitution. Although you may not agree with his policies, it is still important that all Americans respect his office. You should be aware it is not my policy to engage in partisan political discussion in the classroom. I regret that you have decided to ignite this public controversy. I recognize and appreciate that it is your constitutional right to do so as a parent. However, I do ask you to respect my constitutional right to display the posters which have been in my classroom on the wall for over two years. I am happy to continue further discussing if you feel it would bring about a mutual acceptable resolution to this issue, but I'm not taking it down. Blessings, Mrs. Rook. <laughs> said that the Novi Community School District has a de facto policy allowing teachers to put up posters of personal in interest regardless of whether they are related to the subject matter or not. 
because there are other teachers that do display things that are controversial, like the coexist posters, the LGBTQ plus whatever. Uh, but on my side, on the, of course, argued about that. Um, all right. Something that I had seen when I was in the library one day. Uh, she responded by going to several more school board meetings to complain. She even brought someone from years past that another teacher had a problem with. She tried everything, but they couldn't please her. No, no, I wouldn't take it down, and I wasn't planning on it, so. Mm. I made myself known as no by <laughs> Um, okay, so I was in the library one day, and I saw in the hallways a lot of posters going up that students were making. When I was in the library, um, the kids, are, of course, go there to do research, and one, a whole group of kids were making this poster, and this is what was going around the schools, and it's entitled, Kids Should Have the Right to Vote. Kids are already participating in policies, but don't vote. No taxation without representation. Kids with jobs pay taxes, but they don't have the right to vote. Kids have creative minds, so they will be a strong opinion, in, or put a strong opinion into voting. Young people have adult responsibilities, but are denied the same rights. And it goes on complaining. We're going to vote someday, just like this picture. It says here, uh, no guns, protect children, not guns. This is what it's going to look like in our future. And it says, visit NYRA for more information. And I'm wondering, what is that? So I went to the website to look it up. NYRA, National Youth Right Association an organization run by adults for children to get them to protest for a number of things they want to happen. There are six items that children want. So when you look it up, curfew. Uh, they say curfew violates our freedom of movement and are ineffective at reducing crime. So they don't want a curfew. The drinking age, they don't want a drinking age. Uh, they challenge the absurdity of the high drinking age. Uh, medical autonomy. They don't want parent permission to have any medical procedures. Yeah. Student rights. They want more rights to express themselves in and out of school without the fear of being arrested or for disruptive behavior. Oh, Voting age. Right to vote is vital to a fully functioning democracy, and they shouldn't be banned from voting, running for office, making political contributions. Can you imagine a 10-year-old running for office? Uh, age discrimination is a public health issue that is linked to anxiety, depression, obesity, high blood pressure, wait till they become an adult, and substance abuse. They don't want uh, age discrimination for drinking, smoking, driving, working, or certain censorships. I don't even know how 10, 11, 12 year olds get that idea. So, I ask you, how did this all happen? Um, let me read you a little paragraph that is perfect for all of this. I found this in a magazine. If one society wishes to overcome another society, there are a couple of ways of doing it. It can be done by direct attack with guns and bombs or permission. If the first society believes the second society to be stronger militarily, it doesn't choose the first option. And if the first society believes the second society is stronger attached to its beliefs and way of life, 
It knows that the physical, logical subversion option will take a very long time, especially if the second society is very large. A lot of minds must be changed or persuaded. So the aggressor society must do it without being noticed. The change in outlook of the target people must be gradual, so gradual that they don't know it is happening. Of course, they start with the children. If the children can be influenced, future generations will be easier to persuade. So how did this all happen? How did it get this bad? We allowed this to happen. That's right. This social justice, critical race theory, cancel culture is everywhere. It's in our schools, our businesses. It's in the fire and police departments. It's in your local YMCA. Even our churches, some of them have let us down. Worldview is shared instead of biblical view. Libraries, Northville, Northfield Library implemented DII in their mission statement. They were fighting that like crazy. Here on Metro Parks are training their staff with this junk. Um, the fire department is doing critical race theory <coughs> workshops. They are shaming these men for being white until they submit and conform to their way of thinking. Originally, education was the responsibility of two Entities, who were they? Before, way before, in the 1960s, before government took over. Parents and? Churches. The church and the parents were the ones who educated our children. And then in the 60s, the government took over. They have the audacity to say when, where, and how they're gonna teach our kids. And you have no say in it. And you're paying for this junk. Um, but when public schools came about in the 60s, we had given our children up to the government institution to raise, mold, and educate. Public education is doing your children an injustice. It is dividing us, not bringing us together. It is teaching us to hate each other for something that does not exist. But they are trying to recreate it over and over. I, in my 30 years, never experienced any of my students being racist in the classroom, ever. But now, with all of this over and over, you're, you're white, you're a white supremacist, you're racist. Now it's coming out more and more. Well, then, hmm, I guess maybe I am. This may all sound like doom and gloom, but parents need to get involved with their children's education or they will not recognize the beings that just got off the school bus. By the time they get to high school, you will not recognize them because we start from kindergarten on. By the time they get to high school, they will hate you, hate America, say that you are the cause of global warming, pollution, and that everyone, including you, are racist, homophobic, anti-climate change, xenophobic, and whatever else they want to call us. I would say get more involved in school. I think public school is past that. It's not gonna make any difference if you are on the PTO, if you're a volunteer, if you're in their classroom every day, it's not gonna change anymore. Public school is so far gone, um, the only thing you could do is get them out. You have to get them out of public school. You can try homeschooling, I know it's a big task, you can get together with a group of people. You can put them in a Christian school. Um, there are also a lot of private Christian schools out there. Just make sure they are not teaching Common Core because there are even Christian schools out there uh, or charter schools that take federal funding. Now think of it. If you sell your, cell, your soul to the devil, you have to still do the devil's bidding. So if they take federal money, they have to do what the federal government uh, asks them to do. 
some charter and even Christian schools, especially those receiving any governmental funds, will still do Common Core. We are finding that students are so far behind because of the Common Core that by the time they get to college, they have to take remedial math, reading and writing because they're so um, far behind and the math isn't like basic math. One plus one is two. That would take 20 minutes to figure out in the Common Core. So they have to reconfigure the, their brains in college so they can get a proper job. Um, even the science curriculum, which I taught, um, it came from the University of Berkeley, California, so you can imagine. It, um, it had questions multiple choice questions on the test where I was instructed that even if the students answer incorrectly, I was supposed to give them credit for it, not to hurt their self-esteem. Because they say if their uh, self-esteem is hurt, they won't, uh, learning stops. We all need to push back. Don't take this type of behavior that they are pushing on our children. Go to your local school board meetings, but I will tell you that school board meetings is a dog and pony show too. You can run for school board, except a lot of the conservative people who run for school board will eventually cater and, and not do their due diligence anymore. Um, and this fall, the public schools, it's gonna get even worse because the new Biden administration is giving big tax incentives for the um, diversity, equity, inclusion policies in the curriculum. And if they don't follow it, they're gonna use, lose t uh, big amounts of money. So a lot of it is money-based. Um, get a bunch of parents together and don't let the board shut you up, shame you, or manipulate you. And they will do this at the school board. If they say they are not teaching D-E-Y, they are lying because they might be changing the verbiage. Um, on that sheet, there's a lot of different ways that they can call this. It's not just D-E-Y, diversity, equity, inclusion, critical race theory, WAKE, uh, Black Lives Matter, any of those terms. Um, if you ask them specifically, specifically they're not lying, they might call it something else. Help friends and family understand what is going on. Talk to your children and grandchildren about the truth. Leaving them in public school and asking your child, so what'd you learn today? Oh, nothing. Well, what do you do? Oh, we, we had gym, we had recess. You're not gonna get everything from that. They're kids. You can't sit in the room with them every day. Um, and the unions, are protecting the teachers and this whole curriculum. They're gonna cover it up. We don't have to tell you anything. In fact, I had other teachers tell me, you know what you do behind, even if your principal is conservative, you know, even once the door closes, he doesn't know what you're teaching, just do what you want. So if the teacher wants to do this, even if the school district doesn't want to, how are you gonna know? That was another reason, I think, why they didn't want cameras in the classroom or in the schools. Talk to your children and grandchildren. Lobby for real anti-hate laws and policies. Get laws passed. This is important. Get laws passed so that our tax dollars follow the parent if they cho choose to pull their children out or if they don't have children and they want to go to a different school of choice. We are all paying for this propaganda, and they are filling our children's heads with it. God gave you the responsibility not only to teach your children, but also to guard them against evil influences from their peers and profane culture. How do I know all this, you ask? Because I've been doing this for 30 years. So where is my comfort candy? <laughs> and I thank you. <laughs>